Hey guys, it is Thursday, December 6th, and we're live from Chattanooga. I am joined with Nick Austin, who's gonna talk about a new weather system, and this one could be the biggest weather system of the year so far, uh, and it's going to hit the Southeast. Um, and so Nick, what is happening? Well, the reason why this is gonna be a major winter storm for some parts of the country is because there could be a lot of areas of icing. It's not just snow. Um, so right now, the system is, still kind of developing. It's out near the west coast where it's dropping some heavy rain in parts of Southern California and desert southwest as well. But, and that's all this out here on the radar. This whole system is gonna be moving eastward and by Friday night through the day on Saturday, we're talking about the Panhandle of Texas, Amarillo, parts of I-40, and then heading into parts of Southern Arkansas and uh, Northern Arkansas rather into Southern Missouri. Those are the areas that could see a lot of snow as well as um, icing could be freezing rain at the beginning and some sleet, and then it'll change over to snow, which could pile up on top of the ice. Um, and some of the forecast models right now for those areas from the Texas Panhandle and the Northern Arkansas, showing that there could be icing as much as a quarter to maybe even a half an inch of ice in some of those areas. And that could cause major transportation problems because uh, power lines and large tree limbs, they will just buckle under the weight of a quarter to half an inch of ice. Now by Saturday night, and in the Sunday, that whole system is going to move further eastward uh, into parts of the southeast, Ohio River Valley, parts of the Tennessee River Valley, and over into parts of North Carolina. The Smoky Mountains could see several inches of snow, uh, preceded by some sleet or some light freezing rain. And one of the biggest metro areas that could see the most snowfall could be Charlotte, North Carolina. There's some computer models still showing that Charlotte might get uh, as much as six inches of snow. Some are showing more than that. Uh, but I think right now, maybe up to about six inches is a fairly good bet at this point for Charlotte. So that's going to be uh, a major uh, thing for that city. And that system will, through the uh, end of the weekend and into early next week, is going to probably head up to parts of the northeast, but it might go enough offshore that it's not going to be a big deal for the northeastern U.S. But for the south, it is a big deal because um, really any time you get ice anywhere, that's a big deal. But even with large amounts of snow in parts of the south, they're not usually prepared to handle that. Just don't have as many snow plows out there on the roads and things like that. So, but anytime you get ice in any part of the country, that's gonna cause just major uh, problems with freight movement and just getting anything in and out of that area will be impossible because nobody can drive on ice. So, so Nick, when I look at the map right now, I'm not seeing a lot of weather in the areas that you're talking about. This is right. gonna be something that's just gonna rapidly evolve. Right? It's gonna rapidly develop uh, beginning tomorrow. Now, there will be other problems in parts of Texas and the Gulf Coast as far as heavy rain and flooding, and that's all really gonna start cranking up during the day tomorrow across Texas in the afternoon. And by the nighttime, uh, on the northern end of that storm where I was describing, the temperatures will be cold enough that the ice, the snow will start to get cranking up tomorrow night. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, the Southeast, we covered it in the story earlier this week, uh, just about the freight market being really relatively soft in the South because of just the excess of capacity that exists. This is not gonna help that situation, just in terms of disruptions that you may see, right? right? A lot of disruptions. We're talking about power outages <clears throat> and possibly, you know, the roads will be impassable anyway if there's ice on them, but there could be power lines and tree limbs down across roads as well. So yeah, just major disruption. So this hits, yeah. I mean, we've talked about Atlanta being one of the largest freight markets in the country. Uh, it has been overtaken by LA. Atlanta is now the uh, number two market versus uh, the Southern California Basin, uh, predominantly for retail service. Right. Uh, but when we look at it and, and sort of examine the data, uh, that is an area of the country that if we have a major weather system hit the southeast and particularly through that southern corridor, it could have significant implications for sort of uh, folks that are producing freight in this time. Yeah, it could have implications for those areas, even though Atlanta probably won't get any winter weather, it still could be implications for, for Atlanta and other parts of the south. Um, because of the other areas that are going to get hit by the snow and ice. Got it. And so yeah. speaking of Atlanta, uh, Dean, I want to bring Dean Croak in. Uh, Dean, when we talk about sort of what's happening in the southeast, we've talked about just how soft the southeast market is, right. uh, particularly well, the whole U.S. sort of feels soft with the exception of Southern California right now. But Atlanta is really, really soft. What's happened? What are you seeing? Uh, it's a fascinating phenomenon. <clears throat> if you could show back the, the weather map, I think there's something really interesting here that I think carriers and shippers need to be looking at. If you look at the Atlanta market, you can see here that in terms of the, uh, the it's, a, it's kind of a net, uh, it's about a, it's kind of an even money bet in terms of inbound, outbound freight. So there's really 
uh, not a lot of opportunity there. If you look further south here down to Miami, you can see here that this is not a particularly good market for getting freight out of. And this area where this weather is going to hit across through the central, the southwest area here, where there's not a lot of freight coming out of there, I think carriers and shippers should be thinking about moving some of their capacity up to these areas here so carriers can, uh, shippers can start to get that freight out of these markets up here. So I think the Atlanta market, while it's quiet, I think there'll be opportunity up here in some of these other markets tomorrow where the weather's going to start to turn and shippers start to get that freight moving out before the storm hits. So, so Dean, uh, you talked about uh, what can carriers do in this market where weather's coming, We talk Nick right. talked about right. the southeast, the southern quarter, particularly Charlotte, North Carolina, right. looks exposed. Right. What can those carriers do right now to sort of respond to those conditions? So, so I think carriers, shippers and brokers all should be thinking about how do they get, because next Monday and Tuesday, I think there's going to be a really big shutdown, especially if there's an ice event and starts to pull down power lines in this area here. So it'll be hard to get freight out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week. So I'd be thinking about today, Thursday, starting to think about how do I position my assets to help carriers uh, help shippers get their freight out of those markets quicker. So moving capacity out of that market is what you're saying, which yeah. is actually the problem with winter weather is if it shuts down manufacturing or retail, it, it there's just no freight demand, right. Right? right? But what we're seeing right now is this red is indicating a soft market right. in terms of right. just uh, more trucks are going inbound than there are co coming outbound. Right. Uh, so it, it's just gonna it's just gonna muck that up, right? Right, exactly. Okay. Yeah, I think this this could change pretty rapidly by tomorrow as people start to figure out this storm is going to hit. It's rapidly evolving. I think shippers are going to say, "How do we get more freight out on a Friday, which is typically a busy day anyway?" So you you believe that tomorrow we could see really high demand in Charlotte, Surgeon and North Carolina, in surge this, volumes, yeah, just just yeah. in advance yeah. of yeah. a potential weather system. Yeah. I think capacity is going to move like we saw with the hurricanes, capacity moved in the Atlanta market to other markets to help where there was a shortage of trucks. Got it. And so if we look at Atlanta, I mean, going back to the chart in Atlanta, I mean, Atlanta is just soft. We talked a little right. bit about it. Um, I mean, that 7.2 in terms of uh, O-Try is, what that means is 7 loads out of 100 are being turned down, which is really, really, really soft. Right. What are you hearing in the market? Uh, it's a, uh, what we're hearing is that it's the, the retail push is kind of, the, the, it's, it's passed. Uh, it's about half the national average. The national average for turndowns is about 15%. It's about half that rate. So the market has just softened. We, we think it's the retail season is kind of quiet and right off. Uh, and that there's, uh, I mean, if I go back and look at last year, you know, this time last year, we were, we were sitting about right here, uh, which is, I mean, if you look at that, you're about 17%, right? Right. Um, so 17% turndowns, you're at 7% turndowns. It, it means going into the first quarter, it's, it's going to be could be potentially a rough quarter for, for right. carriers. Well, I think part of this could be also the Savannah market and the movement of capacity between those two markets with the inbound shipping volumes with the increased exports that have been coming into that market, I think that's starting to taper off. Okay, so we're seeing, you believe that uh, uh, slower port volumes in Savannah yep. is causing Atlanta to have just more capacity, the Southeast to have more capacity yep. than yep. it historically yep. did. Yep. Um, and it probably also suggests that volumes just overall. One of the things that's been really, really sort of astounding this year is that we've had record high port volumes, uh, but we, have had actually really soft rate conditions in the fourth quarter, which right. sort of suggests that the underlying market is much softer than, than right. perhaps we right. even believe it is. Right. Yeah, there's some uh, you know, geopolitical things that are happening that are artificially holding up the market this time of the year. So we've got the, the January 1 tariff uh, deal happening, even though that's been extended. A lot of that freight was pushed in earlier in through the, in, uh, the ports on the east and west coast. So I think a lot of that freight's already in here, that non-time sensitive inventory. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here is the, the volumes are starting to, to fall right away quickly. Got it. Well, well Dean, I really appreciate your time. Uh, tune in every day at 4 p.m. Eastern to uh, Freight Waves Now. Uh, it's on our social media channels as well as on the site. Uh, the other thing to do is if you're interested in Sonar, the, sh the charts that we show are all available to uh, folks that have sign-ons uh, sign to Sonar and the subscribers. Feel free to reach out to our sales team who can help you out, uh, uh, introduce you to Sonar and give you a demo. Uh, and like always, be safe out there with the weather conditions and have a great uh, rest of the day. Thank you.